Hey, it's Paul here on The Friendly Viewer. Today we're taking a trip to Haiti. It's oh, just about 4.30 in the morning and I am not much of a morning person, but I need to head to the airport and dodge some potholes on the way, so I need to get going. The first thing that you need to bring with you is pretty obvious. You need a valid passport that expires at least six months after your trip, and they're not gonna let you check into your flight without it. I made it through barely. They're doing extra checks today with food, and our plane is already supposed to be leaving, so we'll see what happens. That is our plane right there. The door just shut. We just missed it. There goes our plane. Let me explain what unfolded. Obviously, things didn't go well. So we showed up to the airport, plenty of time, went through, and they checked us in as a big group, which obviously added a lot more time to it, too. About an hour to go through a security line that normally takes 10 minutes. So obviously, with our group, we did not make it through in time. Uh, I'm missing a bag. And there's one person missing another bag, another person missing two. They're probably with the other people, but we're not sure. And we have some of their bags, so it's a, a bit of a conundrum here. We'll reset, try again tomorrow. All right, this is round two. It is now 3.56 a.m. if you could see that. It's even early in the morning. On to another round of dodging some potholes on my way to the airport and then off to Haiti. All right, we made it through security here. Well, one person's still getting searched, but um, today was a little bit quicker. Hopefully the plane's here and we're off without a hitch. All right, made it to Atlanta. That worked out pretty well. Next stop, Haiti. Either on the plane or when you arrive, you're gonna receive a little green customs card that asks for information such as your name, passport number, and where you're staying in Haiti. So go ahead and fill that out. Make sure you have a pen with you for that. Also make sure that you have a $10 bill on you because that's gonna make it go a bit more smooth getting through the next process where you pay your, I'll call it the entrance fee. Then you'll move on to the next step where you talk to customs, hand them your card, they're gonna stamp your passport, and they're gonna give you the bottom slip of that green card back to you. Stick that in your passport because you need it on the way out. They're gonna check for that. Then you go on to the baggage claim area. You will need your bag tags. So make sure to keep those with you because they're gonna check them to make sure that you have the right bags leaving the airport. Then you go through one last little bit of customs where they may ask you what's the contents of your bags to make sure you're not bringing anything you're not supposed to. And then you're off to the transportation portion. All right, we made it to Haiti. We're gonna go put the luggage on the roof there and then we'll head to the hotel after getting some groceries. At the grocery store, some of our favorites would be Jumex, which is like a fruit juice, and fruit champagne, which is very sugary and tastes a lot like liquefied bazooka bubblegum. But that brings us up to item number two, which would be snacks. You should bring some snacks with you and you can purchase some while you're there. I'd suggest a combination. You never know when you need some food or what situation you're gonna be in, so just have something on you, especially if you have any dietary restrictions or sugar level issues. Purchasing those items brings me up to item number three to bring, which would be money. In most of Haiti, you can use US dollars to purchase just about anything. Make sure to bring small bills with you, so ones, fives, tens, and twenties, often gonna give you your change back in the local currency, which is Goots. The current conversion right now of March 2018, and this often changes, so you're gonna have to track this, is 65 Goots to a dollar, which means I have 150 here, so this is just only a little over $2. So you're gonna end up with a mixture of US back and Goods back, and just be prepared for that. So try to use as close to exact change as possible with your US currency when you purchase items. So let me take a step back and talk about ground transportation. If you're coming from the US, it's going to seem a bit crazy. They do drive on the right hand side of the road and there's sometimes a center line, but not always. You'll typically have to cross that center line to get around pedestrians, motorcycles, slower vehicles. That's going to be a bit different. Where it gets even more different is when you get into the intersections. You're not going to typically find any sort of stop sign, stop light, or just about anything at the intersection. So there's going to be a lot of honking and gestures going on to manage those. So it's gonna seem a lot like chaos if you're coming from the US where we're used to every intersection being marked. As far as the road conditions, it's gonna vary from gravel to bumpy to smooth to quite frankly, nicer than some of ours in the US because they don't have a lot of potholes. Along the side of the road, 
which can be a little bit nerve wracking is sometimes some very deep ditches. As far as getting around Haiti, what's the best way? There's a couple of different ways to do it. So there's the taxi services, which would be hopping on the back of a motorcycle with someone. This is a very popular way to get around because it's quick, they're pretty nimble. I've seen as many as six people on a single motorcycle going around with family and kids. There's also things called tap taps, which are brightly colored pickup trucks with a raised topper in the back. And you just hop in the back of those, kind of figure out where they're going, and then you tap on it to let them know that you're getting off. And there's a bus service that's also brightly colored that's similar to that, and you can find that uh, in certain cities. I'd suggest that if you're coming from the US, you're very uncomfortable with Katie, you don't know Crail, to use a taxi tour service with a Crail English speaking driver so you can get to where you're gonna go. It's gonna be more expensive, but you're also gonna feel more comfortable and be more secure. If you're comfortable with Haiti, use any of those other means that are gonna be convenient for you and you're gonna get it around. Our group used a van slash bus to get from the airport to our main destination. And then locally, once we were there, we used a combination of vans and pickup trucks riding in the back to get to our destinations back and forth. And then we again use that prearranged taxi tour service with the big van slash bus to get to the airport again. If you have an international plan and enable it, the cell service there actually isn't too bad. With hotels and lodging in Haiti, if you're coming from the US, you're gonna to have to adjust your scale of what your expectations are. If you're in a high tourist area, there are some nice hotels, but in most of the country, you're gonna find some different things that you're not used to. The hotel we were at had a beautiful pool there. The stairs were quite confusing. It took us three times to figure out how to get up them to our room. It's like it was designed by the artist M.C. Escher. You know, if you've ever seen those stair drawings that kind of go all over the place. The buildings aren't quite up to what we refer to as code. There's little steps everywhere that aren't quite right. It kind of looks like they just made the building as they went. I nailed my head on this little stairwell on this ledge that stuck out the first day dragging a heavy suitcase up there. So just, just keep that in mind. Each morning at the hotel, we'd wake up to either roosters crowing, people singing walking down the street, or horns honking from the noise of the city. Occasionally we wake up to dead silence because the power would be out, and this is something that happens quite a bit there. So as far as power is concerned, they use the standard US outlets, which is pretty handy. They also have very intermittent power, at least where we're at, and I've heard that in other places too. So the hotel would turn off the power during the day, and we wouldn't have anything there, but we're typically out and about, so it didn't matter. But occasionally during the night, you'll have these little spurts of 10 minutes or an hour or so where power just goes out. And that's just something that you expect. So make sure you bring, which is the next item on the list, which would be a flashlight. So this is gonna be something to get you around the hotel. When it's darker out, the hallways are often not well lit. And this is also gonna give you something whenever that power does go out so you can see what you're doing. Similar to electricity, water was very inconsistent as well. Sometimes we had water at the hotel and sometimes we didn't. It really depended on the status of the pumps and the reservoirs and all that, how it works. Water itself there, is something you need to be very careful of. If it's coming out of the tap, you do not want to drink it, brush your teeth with it, or just let it get into your body at all. You can use it for showering and other things, but just don't digest it. And because of that, that's gonna bring up the next item to bring with you, which would be a nice water bottle. As you're there, you'll notice that there's just disposable water bottles everywhere, and they don't need more of those. So if you can bring a nice reusable water bottle, that's gonna help you out. A lot of times you can find different water sources like a Colgan machine type of thing. So you can put water in there. So make sure it's a wide mouth opening and also make sure that the part that you drink out of where your mouth hits is covered up and you don't touch it with your hands every time you get to it. So like this one, for instance, there's a cap on it, you unscrew it and you can get to the part that touches your mouth, which is gonna bring me up to the next thing to bring, which is hand sanitizer. So after you wash your hands with the water, make sure you use hand sanitizer. So either the squirt bottle type or a kind of a wet one type that's a more of a wipe, but that's gonna get your hands clean. You're gonna to wanna to do this anytime you're about to eat or anything where you touch your mouth because you don't know what's in that water or what you've been touching. So just make sure you have plenty of hand sanitizer with you because you're gonna need it. Another little note there, because the water's often inconsistent, you might be using this for your shower or bath to get yourself a little bit clean if you're getting dirty and the water's not there. And that leads me to toilets. 
You're gonna get a wide range of toilets while you're in Haiti. You're gonna get everything from potentially decent looking ones to ones that look like this. What you're gonna find there is also sometimes they don't have this stuff, which is toilet paper. Many places will, but sometimes they won't. So it's highly recommended that you bring with you some sort of camping or portable toilet paper and just make sure you have this on you at all time, just in the case that you end up in the bathroom and there isn't any toilet paper. They do have quite a range of food there, but you're gonna to wanna to try to figure out how to eat very safely. We ate at our hotel and they cooked for, we had a lot of spaghetti noodles, rice, and chicken, and then some other things that were, were interesting to try out. What you're gonna watch out for is you want your food to be cooked well, and you also don't want anything that's been rinsed with that tap water. So you don't wanna eat something like an apple with a peel on it. What you're gonna want is a thick skin fruit that's been peeled, such as a plantain or a banana or perhaps a watermelon where they cut and slice that out so you just have the insides of it. So just make sure to be careful because you could end up getting sick from the food. The next item on the list to bring is gonna help you stay out of the doctor's office either there or when you get back. And that is a healthy immune system and your medications. Months before your trip, make sure to check out the CDC website to see the health conditions in Haiti. What you're gonna find there, and I'll put a link in the description so you can find it for yourself, is suggestions for Hep A, Hep B, tetanus vaccines, maybe typhoid as well, and a whole bunch of other information as far as what's going on in Haiti health-wise. So make sure to pay attention to that and do that far enough in advance. The other thing you wanna bring is some medication with you. So if you have any prescription medications, make sure you have those, and then have things like Tylenol, Bonine, because there is a lot of roads there that are all over the place and people get car sick, perhaps Dramamine for yourself. And the other one would be Imodium or Pepto-Bismol if you end up having digestive system issues. The other thing that you're gonna find there on the CDC website is a whole lot of information about mosquitoes, Zika, malaria, and all these other diseases. So that's gonna bring up the next item on the list, which is insect repellent. The amount of mosquitoes that you encounter while you're there is gonna depend on the season, the location, as well as the time of the day that you're out and about. For me, we're gonna be in an area that did have quite a few mosquitoes, so I did a triple protection. And again, I'll put links to all this in the description below, but I use Sawyer's insect repellent on my bags and outer garments and clothing and shoes. I use lotion as well as off. So using a combination of all three of those that help quite a bit to keep the mosquitoes away. But quite frankly, no matter what you do, there's still a chance that you're gonna get a mosquito bite here and there. So just make sure to take as many precautions as you can and pay attention to those different health warnings. Similar, you also need to bring with you sunscreen. So make sure to bring sunscreen with you, especially if you're coming from sometime in the winter. The sun is hot there, you're not always in shade, and you just wanna make sure you're protected from the sun. So make sure to bring sunscreen with you. Let me talk about the different sides to Haiti for a little bit here. This is technically the second time I've been to Haiti. The first time was on a cruise line. We went up to Labadee, beautiful coastline, very touristy area that they built specifically for cruise ships coming in. On this trip, we went out in the mountains, some of the most gorgeous, beautiful scenery that you'll ever see. It was just breathtaking. But on the flip side, you're also gonna find at different locations, extreme poverty. You're gonna find trash just piled up on the sides of roads and broken down vehicles. So Haiti is very diverse and in brochures and other things, you might not see all the different sides to Haiti, but there are a lot of different dimensions. Another thing I found very interesting in Haiti was that there's not many chain restaurants or franchises. You can find maybe a couple of Domino's and Port-au-Prince, but other than that, you're gonna to have to go to local businesses or individual people to buy things. So nearly everyone there has their own little business and that's how they're making money. So they're selling shoes, they're selling bananas, they're selling hot dogs, they're selling, you name it, they have their own little business. Perhaps they have their own little taxi service, they have a motorcycle. That's just uh, very different than the US. That's something just to keep in mind when you're there to understand the culture and know that you're gonna have to talk to people and find out who to talk to to buy things there and not be able to always go to that chain or mega store that you're used to. As far as clothing goes, the style is actually pretty similar to the US. Uh, jeans, t-shirts, dresses, all those things, very similar to what we wear. One thing I wasn't expecting as much of is they dress a whole lot nicer than I do, especially when it came to church. And that brings me to why we were in Haiti in the first place. We were there for a church launch, which was absolutely amazing. 
and we had a combined construction medical team with our Haitian friends putting on a medical clinic and finishing up some projects in a building that we are creating. It was really quite the amazing experience, and this is where I got to dive in and get some personal relationships from different people from Haiti, and I enjoyed that part a lot. Some little fun tidbits that I took away. Prescription medication in Haiti compared to the U.S., extremely cheap. You can buy stuff there for a fraction of what it costs in the U.S. The other thing is construction products like wood, very expensive there, but they have really nice wood, and a two by four is actually at least two inches by four inches, if not bigger there. One of my favorite things to do while I was there was just interacting with the people. Everyone was super friendly and wanted to help out and we we're working alongside with them. I don't know Creole, some of them didn't know English, but we were able to talk using hand gestures or translators and different things like that. One of the cool things that I saw was these kids with this wheelbarrow. So one day I was, I was doing something, I was busy and I saw them go by and I couldn't catch up to them. So the next day I saw them going again, so I caught up to them to figure out what they were doing. So I'm here with this, these kids here who have made this awesome wheelbarrow. And you can see here, looks like they made it out of shoes. Is this shoes? Shoes? Very cool. What else do you have on here? Santa, you decorate it? You use this to get water? They had made this awesome wheelbarrow out of scraps of woods and the soles of tennis shoes for the tire that worked awesome. And what they do with it is every day they have to go down to this river to get water. So this is quite the task. You'll often see people there with buckets on their heads or carrying big tanks of water because that's just, that's how they get their water every day. That's something that they have to do every single day and they made this awesome wheelbarrow. So I was super impressed by that. If you wanna help out the people in Haiti, I'll put links in the description below. You can check those out and also some videos that talk about how people have tried to help in the past and it hasn't worked out very well. I really enjoyed my time in Haiti and looking forward to when I get to go back. On the way out with immigration and customs, what you're gonna do is you're gonna need your passport and don't forget that green card that you had with you. You're gonna go through and check into your flights. They might ask you a couple of questions, check your bags in. Then you're gonna go through a round of security, going through an x-ray machine. Then you're gonna to go to a waiting area. Make sure there are plenty of time early. There's a couple shops there you can buy some things. There's also some food there while you're waiting. About an hour before your flight is supposed to depart, they're gonna call you up and then you're gonna go through another round of security where they're gonna take a look at your bag, perhaps swab it for chemical testing, perhaps also pat you down. And this happens to nearly everyone, so don't be surprised before you get on your plane. One thing that was interesting, uh, we also found a whole bunch of people wrapping up their carry-on luggage with this clear tape. I don't know why, but <clears throat> that's something you may notice for yourself. If you found this video useful, please make sure to hit the like button and comment below and let me know. If you've already been to Haiti or returning from a trip and you have additional tips, please share them so everyone else can get the benefit of them in the comments as well. Make sure to subscribe so you can watch more videos just like this one and different ones on my channel. This has been Paul with 10 things to bring with you to Haiti. Thank you for watching. And we finally made it back from Haiti. Um, one of us took the voucher for $600 to give up their seat, but other than that, it went off without a hitch.